Hello, welcome back. So today is going to be putting the oil in the transfer box, the gearbox and the engine and hopefully I'm going to try and get it running. I've already put the exhaust on, as you can probably tell. Uh, for some reason my phone didn't want to record that bit. Uh, it is pretty windy so I'm going to try and shield you as much as uh, I can so that you can hear me. Uh, I bought this off eBay for putting the oil in the gearbox and transfer box. It's a little pump. Now hopefully that screws onto the top of the oil that I've got. <laughs> but even though it will do the job, each pump dispenses one ounce of fluid. So the transfer box holds 2.3 litres, the gearbox holds 2.2. So that's about 80 pumps of this. So it's it's going to be a time consuming process but obviously I'll I'll cut most of it out so you're not sat there for ages. Uh, I've put the cowling on for the fan so I'll take the radiators back off. Uh, so I need to put coolant in as well. Uh, I am going to look for another condenser because I'm not happy with that one. I think you know you go do all this work and then you put that thing back on. So I'll probably look for a new one or a good condition second hand one. So that's as much as I can tell you at the minute. <laughs> I've checked all the fuses when I put the loom in to make sure that none of them are blown just so I'm, when I do start it, if it doesn't start I'm not then checking fuses and messing about so that's really it and so yeah <laughs> so to start off with I'm going to fill the engine up now it takes seven litres but with me having the oil pump off and draining the oil completely it will probably take more towards eight usually that's that's the case simple oil and filter change around seven litres but once you've started taking all the oil out the oil pump off and draining it completely it does usually take a little bit more so we've got five litres here I've got another five litres but the rest I'll just put in the measuring jug Obviously, I'll dip it as well. Uh, it's, it's, my pete is an engine with no oil in it. You stick the oil in, and people just go and start them straight up without actually letting the oil settle down into the sump. Now, because this has been dry for so long now, I'm not going to bleed the fuel up straight away. I'm going to turn the engine over, let the oil get to the top end of the engine, re dip the oil, top it up as necessary, and then bleed the fuel system so it'll start up. Reason being is just so you're not starting it up dry because there's nothing worse than bleeding all the fuel system up and then just starting it straight up because the oil's then got to bleed itself through the, the oil pump, then through the filter housing, then to the top end of the engine into the tappets. So a few things, a good couple of seconds there's going to be no oil in those tappets at the top of the engine. So that's why you're better off turning the engine over getting the oil up to the top end before actually bleeding the fuel system and it actually running. So that is something I always do. So that's five litres. That's another litre that I'm putting in. There's one more litre. Well actually no. If you're just doing if you're just doing a simple oil change. I always put near to what it says, so it says 7 litres, but well now I've put 6 litres in, I'll always dip it, just to see where whereabouts it is. Now at the minute, let's just read it back. Now 
Now at the minute it's just actually just below maximum. So I'll leave that for now and when I turn the engine over, let it fill the filter up, I'll then re-dip it before I bleed the fuel system up. So we're just underneath now, I've removed both filler bungs from the gearbox and transfer box. The transfer box is just behind the back plate for the handbrake, that's half inch drive so you can use your ratchet for that. And the gearbox is, I think it's 10 mil, 8 mil Allen key that's just, just above the flange from the transfer box that's on the side of the gearbox obviously so let the pumping commence See fluid once it gets to the end. It's 80 pumps, or 85 for the transfer box. So, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, two, eight, three. Slightly. I think I was just pumping it a little bit fast for a tear up. bit fast. The level's just right on the bottom of the tyre ramp so it's not quite up to the neck which is fine. Oh good to that little pump now and it screws onto the top of the tub so I'm a lot impressed with that. I'll put the link in the description for that little pump. pumping the, the pump too fast for the oil to settle. So that's the transfer box done, just the gearbox now. Get somewhere comfortable. Alright, so just the gearbox now. So this one's 80 pumps. Eight, seventy nine, eighty. Right, it's the gearbox. I'll take that out now. Right, well, this one. Come on. I'm only finished. <laughs> out where you can hang the pipe. I like that. Nice little pump. So, 
Is it my gloves off? Let's put this in the middle and find out. Sorry about my snotty nose. It's because the wind's freezing, it's making my nose rot. Just keep sniffing. Snip that now, I'll see. Right, that's that. Where's my bit of blue roll? So, my dad's kindly refurbished the crossbar that goes here. So, I'll do the UJs on the prop shaft and put the props on, and then put that crossbar back on. And then let's, I'll put the battery on now and uh, see if it'll start. Well, turn it over, get the oil to the top end, dip the oil, bleed the fuel, and then see if she'll go. So now the gearbox and transfer box are full, the engine's full of oil, I've just put some power steering fluid in but again once the engine's turning that's when that will bleed itself through. So before I bleed the fuel system, because uh, on the 2.4s they don't have a, a primer fuel pump, they rely solely on the high pressure pump whereas your TD5s and your 2.2s have a fuel tank pump, so I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to turn the engine over now for the first time, just to get oil to the top end. Then the change of speed. Usually that's when there's oil at the top end, it's in all the bars and everything. So now it's time to bleed the fuel system. So now while the oil's settling down in the engine, I can now bleed the fuel system. Now if you do a lot of work on diesels, I highly recommend buying one of these. What you do, this is the pipe, you put this on the fuel lines, you pump this. And that sucks the fuel through. If you've only got the Land Rover to service, you can get like a little bulb and you squeeze it and it will eventually prime your fuel system. So, there's a number of ways you can do it. If you're just doing a simple filter change, take the fuel filter off and fill it full of clean diesel. Screw the filter back on, the engine should start and it should bleed itself. But like this, if there's no fuel whatsoever near the front of the engine, you'll need a bleeder. So, on the fuel pump, I'll just show you actually. So on the fuel pump, this pipe here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but down here, there's a little connection. And that is actually the return to the pump. So if you're sucking it through the return, it's got to go through the in inlet of the pump if that makes sense so what I'm going to do I'm going to try get some fuel through here probably suck about half a litre out then I definitely know there's fuel there and once the engine's cranked over it should actually pull the air out itself so it's just a little push fit so press the button in should come off. If it doesn't, just give it like a bit of a twist sometimes they, they are stuck. I put the pipe on. Now this is transparent so well it used to be. So you can see air bubbles. I'll give it some pump. I can 
and see if I show you quickly. I don't know if you can see that. You see the air? So it's pulling fuel through. Now that might be what's just left in the pump. There we go, more air. So when that air disappears, I'm going to try and uh, well dip the oil, probably top the oil up, and then start it. I'll just leave that going for a few minutes. That's from previous jobs. So I'll just leave that going for five minutes. I'll just keep my eye on it. So while the fuel's bleeding through, I'll just dip the oil. That's now halfway down the uh, down the dipstick. I'll just stick half a litre in. I am getting some fuel, a lot, quite a bit of fuel now actually. He says. Yeah, a lot of fuel and a lot of air. We're going up very, very slowly. I do remember actually. I'm sure last time I did it, I pulled the return pipe off and actually turned the engine over while this was sucking and it did act like a primer and it pulled fuel through. It's got about a quarter of a litre out so far. Pulling it through nice now. I'm going to give it two minutes and then we'll see if it goes. I'll put a bit of power steering fluid in as well, uh, just so the, the power steering pump got some oil. And once it's running, I'll turn it off and then I'll put some coolant in and then I'll let it run for a good half an hour. Now it's definitely some fuel coming out there now so pull the pipe off, put that one back on and then I'll try and start it. So I've just put the air filter box top on just for the air, air mass meter. So now we're going to try and start it. I'm quite pleased at how well that started then as well. Very good, very good. So I've put some coolant in it now. 
check the oil level again and I'll leave it running a good half hour now so now I'm going to put some coolant in I'll show you how to bleed the system make sure your heaters turn on hot um, without the fans on leave the fans off just put the heater on warm uh, fill the expansion tank full of coolant this is I'm putting blue stuff in for now because I'll probably change it within the year just to flush it all out and then put the red stuff back in uh, this is two year protection the reds for um, so I'll fill it up and then there's a bleed nipple on the heat of heat control valve uh, you unscrew that wait for coolant to start coming out top the expansion bottle back up and then start the engine now the engine is a bit tappy at the minute because the hydraulic tap pits aren't full of oil so I'll top the oil up start it up and leave it running a good half hour uh, and it'll quiet itself back down then so I'll show you how to bleed the cooling system up now so this is a 60-40 mixture so it's 60% water to 40% antifreeze so it's more than strong enough at the minute but while the engine's sat now I didn't want to fill it full of water because it's pretty cold so the last thing you want is the water freezing in the engine okay. yeah that's going down I can't remember how much it takes but I'm sure it's near the 10 litre mark probably a little bit more took five litres so this is the bleed screw you'll be able to hear the air coming through as the level goes down Starting up. I'll just start it up.
Slavic ticking over now. It's been sat ticking over for the last five minutes now. You can hear the difference now in the tone of the engine. There's no ticking noises because all those packets are full of oil. It actually sounds really, really quiet. The thermostat's open, heat is nice and warm in the car. No warning lights on the gas. <laughs> well, simply really, I'm not going to do anything. The car's warning lights. Oh, yeah, really, all of them are today. So, all we've got to do now is make it drive. <laughs> so, I'll see you in the next one.